And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. Okay, folks, here is our uh, last cutting of our test plot hay. And uh, we got six bales off of it. And these bales are averaging about 54 pounds each. I think maybe one or two of them is pushing 60. But these are fantastic small round bales of hay. Uh, we could not be happier with them. Uh, our little test plot is uh, showing us what we need to do with our dirt. Uh, and we try to do everything as regenerative as we can. And, and I don't know if I pronounced that word right. That sounded terrible. But uh, we try to be good stewards of our land, in other words. And we really don't want to use uh, chemicals no more than absolutely necessary. Uh, and we use uh, a lot of uh, natural fertilizing chicken manure um, and we use red clover which is dual purpose red clover is good for your orchard grass and your timothy grass and your fescue grass hay uh, as well as the animals love it the, the leaves and things in orchard grass, or excuse me, red clover are packed full of protein. And it also produces nitrogen into your ground and it works with the nitrogen in your ground uh, to feed your other grasses. And we're, we're doing a lot of things like that with our hay. And um, we're gonna incorporate what we do in our test plot over into our larger hay field. That's what the test plot's for. Uh, we figure out there on a smaller scale what we need to do before we take it and uh, apply it at a larger scale to uh, our bigger hay fields. So we're really happy with, the, with, with what's happened here with our test plot and this cutting the hay. And we're fixing to do some seeding of orchard grass and red clover mixture into our hay field that we just cut. We're gonna do some more seeding in it. So we'll take you along with that and uh, eventually and show you what's up and what's going on with the hay. But. Our farm hay production fertilizer experts are on the job this evening. Howdy folks, Darren back here with you again at Cross Timbers Farm. Welcome to 8th Day Chronicles. Glad to have you with us on this beautiful afternoon, uh, early evening. It's been a beautiful day here in the mountains of North Carolina. We're blessed to live here and uh, blessed to live on this little farm and uh, we're glad to have you along with us uh, our regular subscribers that come along with us here to the farm for our daily chores and uh, things we do around here our, our hay projects and stuff like that uh, you're part of the cross timbers family and we uh, regular visitor to the farm as so we'll say and we're glad to have you with us but uh, we just recently finished baling our test plot hay and uh it, uh, it turned out really well. The, uh, I was very pleased with the quality of it. Um, you gotta cut your hay at the opportune time, at the opportune stage of growth. Uh, whether that growth be, you know, this high, and that's when it's prime, or if it's, you know, this high or over your head, uh, you gotta cut your hay when it's at the prime time as far as your nutrients and the nutritional value of that hay um, is when you got to cut it and this was our second cutting and it was late 
Um, uh, we had a lot of rain last month and uh, rain just every day or every few days and uh, prevented us from, from cutting it uh, any earlier. Plus, it wasn't ready. We had cut, light, our first cutting uh, this past year was late. Uh, we were waiting on some equipment and that put us behind and uh, it just it was what it was. There were some circumstances beyond our control that caused us to have our first cutting really late. And uh, then our, uh, through our second cutting, when we gave it, you know, uh, seven or eight weeks worth of growth to wait for that opportune time to cut. So uh, we cut our test plot hay and we, uh, if you're unfamiliar uh, with our previous videos, we have a small patch of ground in front of our barn that we use as a test plot for hay production and, and uh, a proving ground, so to speak. We have worked with the dirt. We've uh, worked with fertilization and different techniques with seeding and things of that nature. And it, it's kind of our little lab on the farm, so to speak. Uh, we will take what we learn in this small test plot and what works and what doesn't and what really works and works well, then we will apply that to our larger hay fields uh, later on. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, different things with this little test plot and it's it's coming along really, really well. This uh, nice little cutting hay we got off of it uh, was fantastic hay. We were able to cut it at the, the optimum time which is key for your quality. Um, even though the, the, the uh, height of it was not all that great, but it was, as far as the time of the year and getting late in the year, it was that opportune time to cut. So we did cut that, and it actually came out a little better than I thought it would. So uh, I've done some figuring on our hay, and, and before I get to that, I would prefer to uh, have our hay fields and the hay we produce here, we strive for quality over quantity. I would rather have three bales of top shelf, grade A, number one, weed free, optimal hay as I would to have 15 bales of mediocre or poor hay. So we strive to have uh, the best hay we can produce. Uh, the most nutrition for our animals, for our dairy goats, uh, and any hay that we sell, uh, we want to be able to uh, sell the best hay anywhere around. And uh, that's what we're striving for, and, and we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, we're, we're proud of what's happening in our little test plot and what's even happening in our larger hay fields. Uh, some of those things that we've done up here, we've applied back there and the fruits of our labor are showing. We still have ways to uh, ground to go. So anyway, our little test plot, and I've got a little piece of paper here to keep me on track. Our little test plot that we uh, we use as a proving grounds or, or what we do with the dirt and with the soil and uh, with uh, a mixed grass hay with legumes and red clover and our orchard grass and our tall fescue. Uh, this little, little plot of ground that we use for a testing ground is 9,049 square feet which equals to point two tenths of an acre. So this is a very small little plot. Um, it's only two tenths of an acre. So uh, recently we baled the hay off of it. We cut it and baled it. And we ended up with six bales of hay off of this two tenths of an acre. And uh, we weighed the bales, all six bales, 
Some of them were a little more, some a little less, but the average of those six bales was 54 pounds. So we take those 54 pounds of six bales and it equaled out to 324 pounds of hay. Okay, if you figure that on to an acre, let's go from that two tenths of an acre and let's jump out to an acre. Then, you know, you can start, you, you can do the math and figure when you go on up to 20 acres and all. If you've got, if you've got one acre figured, then you can figure whatever. Um, but at one acre, if, if our test plot was one acre in size, all else being equal, the ground being equal, it would have produced 1,543 pounds of hay, of forage. Uh, it would have, one acre would have produced approximately 29 bales of this mini round bale at 54 pound average. So, now that, bear in mind this was the second cutting, it's not first cutting, this was second cutting and it was late in the year. Uh, a little later than we would normally want to cut our second cutting, but the first cutting, like I said, was cut late, so we had to cut the second cutting late. Uh, but uh, for what it is, mid-September, here in the mountains, our growing season is shorter, and we would prefer to cut our hay, the, the first cutting on somewhere in the neighborhood of Memorial Day weekend, the end of May, 1st of June, and then we would cut our second cutting somewhere around Labor Day, or a little bit before. Uh, the 1st of September or uh, late August 1st of September here we are in mid-September so we're a few weeks late uh, and we were we were almost a month late no yeah we were a month and a half to two months late on our first cutting so you can see the growing stage we had between was small and even with that small, we ended up with uh, uh, 324 pounds on 0 0.2 tenths of an acre. And we would have, if it was a full acre, we'd end up 1,543 pounds and 28, I'm sorry, 29 bales. And you know, you have factors that affect hay yield. Uh, the length of the growing season where you are. Here in the mountains, our growing season is not as long as it is at lower elevations. Uh, we, I, I know uh, people and have friends that live in a lot lower elevation in the flat land, as I like to say, and they can get three to four, maybe even sometimes five cuttings a year. Uh, here in the mountains, we're, we're doing really well to get two cuttings. And also, the, another thing that will affect your hay yield and how much your, your ground's gonna produce is the type of hay or forage that you grow. Here we grow a mixed grass with some uh, red clover and uh, that'll affect uh, the weight of your yield. And, and like I alluded to a minute ago, the timing and the number of times that you can cut that hay. So, uh, you know, you could, we could let our hay go longer and uh, let it grow more and get taller and thicker and taller and the seed heads really develop and even the seeds fall off and uh, up our yield and I'm not for that. I've never been for that and never will probably be for that. I would rather have quality over quantity. And also uh, another thing that really affects your, your uh, hay production is the fertilizer you use. Do you use fertilizer and what, if you do, what kind and how's it applied and things of that nature. Uh, real quickly, let me show you our fertilizer. I can show it to you right now. Right there. They're doing their job. Not only do they produce us wonderful fresh farm eggs every day, they fertilize our hay pastures, and our, especially our test plot up here. So, uh, there is our method of fertilize. 
for our, our test plots. Uh, and also for our uh, for our uh, main fields. We uh, we free range our chickens and we let them out every day and we keep them up till about lunchtime because we don't want to have to go out and find eggs under bushes and in the, off the bank somewhere and under trees and under equipment trailers and things of that nature. So we keep them up every day till about lunchtime or noon, noonish, somewhere in that area. Uh, till most of our hens lay in the mornings. So once they, we're pretty sure they're, they've done their deed of laying food for us every day, then we, uh, we turn them out to free range the rest of the day. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course they go straight out into our hay fields and get to work uh, fertilizing our field. I call them our fertilization experts here at the farm. Uh, so that's the fertilizer we use. And we also will lime if need be, if, our, if a soil test says that our soil needs lime, then we'll, we, you know, we'll do whatever we need. But as far as any chemical fertilizers or spray fertilizers, we don't use it. Uh, not at this time. Uh, we haven't used it in a long time. So, uh, you know, and, and another thing that will per, uh, affect uh, hay yield is your elevation. Uh, like I alluded to earlier, we're, we're at a, a higher elevation here in the mountains and our growing season's not as long. And another thing that'll affect your uh, uh, hay yield is soil conditions. And that's something we really work on here. I'm a firm believer in the old saying, it starts with the dirt. And good dirt will yield good hay. And uh, it's another thing like the old saying, and I refer to this a lot with our chickens and our, and our dairy goats, the, the milk produced and the cheese. Uh, you feed your dairy goats junk, and guess what your dairy goat milk is going to taste like? Junk. Uh, if your soil is uh, starving for nutrients and there's no life in it, there's no uh, biomass in it, and there's no bacteria and, and microbes and things, fungi and things in your dirt that it needs, and good nitrogen being put in that ground by red clover and by uh, chicken manure and things of that nature, your, your, your hay's, your hay's going to be poor. Uh, you might get a whole lot of it, but it's going to be poor. Uh, it starts with the dirt. So, you know, your soil conditions means a lot. And if you are fortunate enough to have your hay fields in a lush river bottom, then God bless you uh, with that rich river bottom dirt. Here in the mountains, um, on hillsides and higher elevation, we're not blessed with that good of dirt, not like a river bottom. So we have to work at our soil. And uh, right now the farm employees are out here uh, working that soil, uh, scratching and uh, doing what chickens are supposed to do. And, and it don't take them long until their uh, product is coming out the, the south end of them when they're northbound and it's fertilizing our pastures and fertilizing our hay and uh, they, it's fantastic we love it so you know uh, your soil conditions has a whole lot to do with your with your hay yields along with your elevation and and weather there's some things with the weather you just can't control uh, we could have the best soil and the richest soil we could get and and our hay really coming on in the spring and looking really good and we could enter into a drought and our hay production just almost stall and stop. Uh, and we end up with very little hay. So, you know, your weather, your weather and the amount of rainfall you get plays a large role in, the, in your hay yield. So, uh, again, we, uh, we ended up, uh, with six bales off of our test plot that we bailed the other day. And there's a video on that, and uh, feel free to go to our small scale hay and equipment playlist and check that out. Uh, but we got six bales off of 0.2 acres. And those bales averaged 54 pounds each, which equaled 324 pounds of yield. 
and if we figure that to the acre at one acre it would have produced 1543 pounds and approximately 29 bales at 54 pounds each and we can improve on that I'm, I'm not disappointed with those numbers but I'm not satisfied with them either but we'd like to get our production up just a little more we don't want to stress our dirt and wear our dirt out and uh, uh, years down the road have our production not be as good uh, but you have to continue working with your soil and your dirt and that's what we intend to do so I thought I'd just update you on our uh, test plot results and uh, like I said we're happy with it the, the test plots doing really well in the next couple of days we're fixing to do some seeding on our test plot um, it, it it's a little bit thin in a few places and other places it's really good but we're going to do some seeding uh, we're going to seed orchard grass and red clover and a mixture of about five uh, pounds of orchard grass to about two pounds of red clover that'll be the average mixture of what we put in I'm not sure exactly yet how many pounds of each we'll be putting but it'll be somewhere in that area five to two ratio uh, we're going to be doing some seeding and uh, the next day or two fall of the year is my preferred time to seed i think in the spring uh, i don't think you get quite as good a growth i think maybe you get a little faster growth but not as good i think if you seed in the fall uh, i think your seed has more time to develop better root uh, when it sprouts and and develop better root over the winter and uh, that's that's our intention so uh, thanks for being with us today Thank you for stopping by for the analysis of our test plot hay and uh, our production yield. And uh, it's been a beautiful day here and we're really glad to have you with us. Thanks so much. If you're so inclined, we'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe to our channel. God bless and have a good evening.